I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is December 14th, 2019, and in this video I'll be going over how to 3D print chains. Okay, but first, why am I doing this? Uh, I really want to print 3D chains out for two reasons. One, it's kind of a really cool thing that you can to show people that you can 3D print chains on a 3D printer. It's just really kind of cool. Um, it's one thing that catches their attention. Uh, and the other reason is uh, this next year we're, well, currently we're having a house built. And once this house gets built, it's going to be my first home loan I've ever had. And to try to represent the chains of debt, we're going to, uh, my idea was to print up some chains representing our debt and that each debt on our house and that each chain would represent $1,000. So that as we pay off the house, we can cut the chains of debt. Uh, but with that, I wanted to investigate what other people are doing and also figure out how I could actually put numbers on a chain so that I could actually see the numbers that I, that I need to do for my own personal idea. Um, but before I get to that, let me go over what other people are doing on Thingiverse with chains. Okay, there's a couple of things that I found on Thingiverse. Oops, I should probably go open up another one here. Uh, first of all, if you just want to print a chain just to see how cool it looks and show what's going on, uh, this is probably the simplest, easiest one to do. Here is Thing. 451773. So just go download this, print it out. I think I gave it away. I printed one out and it's similar to this one that I printed on my own. You know, it's a little big, a little robust. It's in a straight line and it works really well. I, it was really fun to watch. It's a cool one, easy one. If you just want to print chains just to prove you can print chains, that's the one to do. Uh, there were two other I found. Um, well, not, let's see, that is two, eight, five, no. ah, this one. 284782. No, that's mine. <laughs> oh, not that one. I copied the wrong thing. This one, sorry, 2916907. -9 this one looks really interesting. He's trying to show how he can print a lot. Um, and it seemed really interesting. Um, but the one thing for me, it I was interested in doing something in open SCAD. And it looks like he may have done it in OpenSCAD, but if he did, he's not showing the file. So I looked at some of these, it looked interesting. If you just already want them pre-built, I haven't printed any of these out, but it seems like a good one to go to do bigger chains, but you're getting a default. Here's 100 chains, here's 200 chains. And it's, you know, he's got some really cool pictures. So definitely one to check out. Um, but then the third one that I liked is this one. It happens to be things 28405. And it has a chain generator. And it gave me a lot of uh, clues on what to do. And actually he, if you look in his things file, he actually has the open SCAD. So you can actually open the, download the open SCAD and tweak it. And so in there you can, set, he also provides a few chain lengths, 30 and 67, but you can open it up, tweak some numbers and kind of make your own chain. So, which is what I want, because I want to make a specific number of chains. Um, but with that, this does have one little issue and I'm gonna kind of go over that and show what I did to try to fix the issue that I came across. Okay, so here's my chain generator file. I uploaded it up to Thingiverse. It happened to be Thing 3284739. And so I'll actually just download it from here to run it from here to show you what's going on. So I put up a few files. You can just download them and make them. Uh, but let me download the chain generator, which happens to be an open SCAD file. And if you're unfamiliar with open SCAD, it's a project where you can define 3D images as code. And so if I take this, and in this case, the, the, the uh, shape is a little complex. If you try to run the preview, you're going to get a bunch of garbage. So if I try to run that, yeah, you get nothing. So you actually have to do a full render here, which takes a few seconds because out of the default here, I think it makes five, yeah, five, five links. And it makes them in a spiral. There we go. And also what it does is it numbers them. So there is the number one. There's the number two. There is number three and so on. So it'll go, it'll number them a row by default, number four and number five. Um, and you can put other text on there. So let me go through how to use this, uh, how I've set it up. So it's fairly simple. So you can come in here and you can change the length, width, height, and depth. Um, now, I'll give you this warning. As you change this, you may have some issues, which I'm going to go over in a few in a, in a minute here, showing why I had issues with the other chain link crater and why you might have issues with just this chain link crater. 
is because if you're doing them in a row, it's fairly easy to make sure they don't hit each other as long as they're not too thick. Uh, but the minute you start to want to make more and you start, you need to spiral it. Once you start to angle it, it becomes a little tricky on how you angle it correctly so they don't hit each other, so that they don't uh, overlap in such a way that the print might print them as not as chains that are apart, but as one piece. And I'll show that in a minute. Uh, but here, there's a length. That's how long it is. So I could change this to 120 as an example. Uh, before I do this, I won't go over this quite yet, but I'll change. I'll just do three lengths so it renders quicker, quick, more quickly. And so now you should see chains that are much longer. But again, as you change these numbers, you might need to play with them to make sure they, the chains don't accidentally merge. I like that. It did not like that. Oh, it didn't like that because the height is so much that it overlapped. So let me... Okay. Ooh, so I guess I got my own problems, huh? <laughs> yeah, I see. I'm running the same issues he is. Uh, let me uh, change that back to 60. I'll change that back to three. Let me do a simpler edit. Let me do the diameter, which is kind of the diameter of the link, how big it is. I'll make it six, and we should see a skinnier link. There we go. And I've got little hanger-ons. Well, so much for my code, huh? <laughs> I guess life is more difficult than I thought. Let me try 10. Okay, maybe somebody else can <laughs> have fun. Ah, I tested my code in a many, many ways, and so, okay, there it's a little happy at 10, okay. Uh, and this R0 has to do with the spiral, where you actually start. So R, R0 of 60, I believe, should be 60 divided by 2 pi, so roughly 8 spirals out, something like that, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, the pitch is also how you increase pitch per radius. So you may have to play with some of these numbers. Uh, but then there, there you go. Now, one thing I did add that is not in his, in his, well, nah, let me, before I go into that, let me show you the rest of what I can do. So in, because I intended this to always have text on it, what it does is you can come down here and say, create numbers one to three, or you could say one to seven or four to seven. If I say four to seven, it'll make four, six, and seven and it will number them those. So you can make as many numbered chains as you want. Now you could go in my code and tweak it. You don't have to make the text. Uh, well, in fact, an easy way to do that. Let me, I'll show that here in a second. So there we go. We start at number, start at number four and go all the way to seven. That's a tool for me because I intend to make, you know, several hundred of these for, to represent the debt we're putting on the house. Um, but if you don't want text, but you want a certain number, you can go in here and say one, and I'll say four, and you can go down here to where, let's see, line, let me make this a little, nudge this, there, not that, go down, 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 here it says begin font section, and end font section, you can come down here, and just comment this out. And then you should get the same number of links you wanted, but now without text. But I want that, so I will put that back the way it is. Um, also, another thing to take note, you might want a different font. I happen to be using, where are we font? My font. There it is, Bajas 93 style regular which may not even be on your machine. So if it's on your machine, you'll get a different default font. But if you want to change this, what you can do is you can go in here into your help menu and look at your font list. Click on that. It'll show you the available fonts on your computer because that's where it's getting the font from. And I can go down here and say, okay, I don't want that. I want uh, Broadway, whatever that is. Copy it to my clipboard, hit okay. And then I can paste in here, and that is my Broadway. And whatever kind of font that is, it'll do Broadway. And there you go. So you can see it looks like a little different kind of font than what I had. So you can change your fonts. 
I like the one I chose, but you can change your mind, do whatever you want. Okay, so that is the broad view on how that works with numbers. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can comment out that text array and use this text array where you can actually put in text. So here I have your text here, iqlist.com. Each one will be on an individual chain. So if I run this bit of code, I should have that text show up on those. There we go. So we see your text here and then iqlist.com. So you can change whatever you want. It'll show up um, and you can keep adding more. So if I want to do hi, that would add another chain that says hi. So easy peasy. So that's how mine works. That's how you can edit it and tweak it to do what you want. Um, so with that, let me go to the next section where I want to explain some of the problems that you might experience with mine and that I experience with the other chain generator. Okay, so here's the other cha chain generator. So I tweaked it slightly. I said it, you, he set up all kinds of nice features in here. So you can set it to do spirals, which I changed it to do a spiral. I changed it to do 30 links. And here they are rendered. And it all looks well and good. Uh, but there is a problem which you can probably overcome uh, with tweaking some more of the uh, the different uh, things in here, which, you know, you may have to tweak some of my, my uh, variables too on mine to get mine to work. But I'll, I'll explain what I did. So here, this looks well and good, but the minute you save it to an STL file, which I did earlier, and let me see if I can bring it up here. There we go. So I did some... I did some test here. And so I already rendered this earlier, made an STL file, because if you want to make 30 uh, chains, it takes a little while to render them all. But if I take his and drop them in as is, now I didn't tweak anything. I could tweak this enough to get it working. Like I and I, I don't know, I think I mentioned this earlier, but the problem is as you do this spiral, the further you get out, the straighter the, 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 uh, the less the angle is between two chains until eventually it's almost a straight line. Once it's a straight line, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, it'll easily fit, but but before then it kind of gets hard on how it's going to connect. So the further, you, the uh, closer you are to the center of the spiral, the harder it is to get them to match up. So if I take this and just generate, you'll see the problem because in this example, the chains will connect and it'll print such a way that they will be connected. And there's no way to break them apart. Uh, they're not even slightly connected. So if I, I go here we see the bottom looks fine, nothing's touching, but as I go up, oh, look at that. See if I look right, doom, doom, there. They're touching right there in the center, right there is touching. Now, if you look on the outside, it's not touching yet because the angle's less. But as I go up, you see it touches more, 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 and even finally the outside one touches. And so see, those are completely connected and then we're fine again, and then you see we connect on the top. Now I could probably go through and start tweaking a bunch of his numbers and get it to work just fine to where it's not going to attach. Um, and he's done several of those, obviously. Plus he's got other features he can do circles. So there's a lot of cool features of what he's done. Uh, so what I wanted to do, I came up with an idea. It's not perfect. Maybe someone can improve the idea I had. My idea, let me go pull up my code. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. I can, there's my, there's my code showing my 30 spirals. So there we are doing 30 spirals. What I've done is I've made, uh, here's my spiral chain module, and I have a nudge factor here. So I'm reusing some of the code that he did, showing how you angle things properly as they go out, and it's working just fine. But what I added is a nudge factor because every other chain, like in this case, the one, if I'm, the one, you can use choose even or odds. In this case, I'm choosing evens, I believe. I, I can do a nudge, nudge factor where I move it away from the radius or closer to the radius. And so here's my nudge factor I happened to come up with was 2D divided by seven, two times the diameter of the chain divided by seven. That happened to work for me fairly well, uh, but there might be a better way to do it. And so as you come down here, basically so it, uses, it uses that nudge factor and it says, okay, where are you nudge factor? 
There you go. So it will rotate, it will nudge it. Uh, it'll negatively nudge it divided by the square root of the number of chains you are out plus one. Uh, the idea being the further you get out, the straighter, the less the angle is and the less nudge you need. You need a more severe nudge as you're closer and a less nudge as you get further out. So that was my idea. You need a, and, but that's true. You need a bigger nudge as you're closer, a less nudge as you get out. And so with these numbers, which I think are my default numbers, yeah, 60, 45, 12, and an R naught of 60, and a pitch of 60, it works. So I can drop that in, and it's a little big, so I need to shrink it, <clears throat> and generate it. Now again, I could probably have gotten his to work by tweaking the numbers. I could have probably made his R naught bigger and eventually gotten there and gotten his to work. But even so, he doesn't have this nudge factor. I think this nudge factor helps so you can make a tighter spiral. But let's see how well I did here. But even my nudge factor, you may need to tweak it based on, you might want thinner chains or bigger chains or wider chains, and you may need to tweak even that the nudge factor might not be quite correct for what you may be doing. Or go write your own OpenSCAD code. It's kind of cool to write your own code. Okay, so here we go. Starting at the bottom, life's good. And if we look at the center here, which is be, be the worst spot, but I did nudge it, we can see that they are not touching, and yet they're thick links. And they're kind of dancing around each other. And also, if we look further out, you see they're a lot further away. They're not nearly as bad. And here, they're a little bit worse. They're closer, but they don't touch. And there they go. And it works, it works a lot better. So that is what I came up with. Uh, and it's been working successful. So I've made several of my own chains. I made that one. I tried to make a, a 50 chain length and it was working just fine. I had to run it really slowly at first, like 25, 30% speed. And it worked pretty well, but then it got to a point, it had two chains. I think I threw them away. Two chains screwed up, and so they couldn't attach, so I ended up with two sections rather than one 50-50 chain long. Um, so I've had a lot of failures. Um, harder to print these small ones, but it printed, it worked. So overall, I think it's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy. Um, go out and print some of these chains. It's really kind of fun, and it's really fun to show off. I've, I've had people just even look at them going, how in the world did you make that? And then I had to show them before it clicked. So it's a really fun project to show people. Uh, but with that, let me go over and print some and show you uh, what the what I normally do, the relative cost and the time to print these out. Okay, so I was able to print out the two examples I kind of have in my code, one the text and one the numbers. And so let's see if we can show it really well. So there's, it says your, you know, it's got text on the other side, text here. Anyway, that worked out pretty well. The numbers, there we are. We got one with numbers. Numbers. Uh, but anyway, I like to go over the numbers. So the actual numbers to print this out. So uh, for uh, for the text one, it took four hours and three minutes to print. It took 0 0.038 cents worth of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.042 kilograms. And at twenty dollars per kilogram, that comes out to eighty-four cents worth of filament. So all in all, it took about eighty-eight cents to to uh, print this out. And then for the number one, the numbers are pretty much the same. It took four hours and one minute to print. It took 0 0.037 cents electricity. And it weighs 0 0.04 kilograms, but I could be a little off on that, you know, just a little two there. So that's 80 cents worth of filament. And the total cost in this is 84 cents. So 84 cents, 88 cents to print four links with 20% infill uh, with the normal settings. But again, you can shrink that, tweak that, do whatever you want. Um, as another note, so... I like this. This was fun. I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I've uploaded this thing to Thingiverse. It seems to be getting a few hits, which is kind of nice. Uh, also, I went back into my code. In the first part of this video, you saw me put some numbers in there. And all of a sudden, the code wasn't very happy about some of my numbers, making it longer and things like that. So I actually did go fix part of my code. Oh, let me go. Actually, I, and I've re-uploaded it. So let me go to Thingiverse. Here's, here I am. And I will download it directly, so there's no question of what it is. And this is what I just uploaded there this morning. This being the 15th as I filmed this. 
this portion. <clears throat> and what I did find out, I found out a few things. So f I fixed a few things. I also found out some things that can't be fixed easily with the way I did things. So what I've done is uh, basically your length versus your height. Your length should be no more than twice your height. Otherwise, it gets weird with the way I did it. It's not going to work very well. But I did fix it, so we don't, in some cases, we don't have these little ghost objects, and we don't have these other angles. And also, I did some tweaks uh, with the R naught and the diameter, so that with skinnier things, it works out pretty well. It's not hitting things. Um, so I did a bunch of tweaks. So some of the examples I was trying to make work before uh, should work now. So it's still not perfect, still some issues, uh, but a little more robust than what it was. So that's been fixed, and so there you go. Um, in fact, maybe I should... Wow. Anyway, you can, go, you can go back, download this, and repeat the numbers that I put in earlier uh, in this video, and they'll actually work. So I did actually test those numbers, with the exception of if you try to make the length more than twice the height, that's not going to work very well. But anyway, this has been a fun thing to learn how to do and to write this OpenSCAD uh, code, and I hope people out there have fun with this, making a bunch of chains. Oh, and another thing, uh, last thing. Uh, I had some issues, I think I talked about earlier when I was trying to print out 50 chains, uh, that I had some issues at, the, at, at one point. Uh, so what I am going to do, and that, when I was printing these out, I was printing these out with no brims. Which works okay with a bigger one, but with the smaller, one, smaller ones I had to print out to get more numbers, I didn't do a brim. So, duh on me. So I'm actually going to go through right now, and just personally, and try to print out a 50 and a 100, but with brims, so it should hold pretty nice and tight, and life should be good. But anyway cool. This has been a lot of fun. So hope this was entertaining. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.